Hi, my name is Steve and welcome to the Seaside Lockmaking Channel and it's harvest day today and I thought I'd also just check in on the various different squash plants and show you how they're going. So uh, let's get on, do that. It's such a stunning morning today and I'm actually down on the plot to do the harvest but I'm just distracting myself a little bit by taking a look at these peppers and I've got to say I'm really really pleased with them I really like to plant them small so that they go in as you know young vigorous healthy plants and they've probably doubled in size since I've put them in and they're going to romp away and I suspect they'll easily catch up with plants that were put in much bigger than they were and I've actually we've just had a bit of rain uh, I think we probably had about 10 millimeters and it's not really fully penetrated the mulch but it's reasonably good and so I've just given them a bit of water because my water butts are full so where the plants are we've definitely easily penetrated the mulch and the soil underneath is now lovely and moist and the moist this mulch is obviously going to keep all that moisture locked in so these plants are off to a good start I'm really pleased with them um, we've got some sweet corn down there and I'm equally pleased with that it's thickened up no end in the last week and of course that's what you want to see I had to put little stakes in because we had the gales and the plants were so feeble and now when I look at them it seems incredible that they actually needed those um, canes to support them because they've just thickened up so nicely and I've just weeded this bed and it took me all 30 seconds and that's the kind of weeding that I like so what we've got here anyway is we've got um, courgettes at the ends that end there and right down there and then we've got crown prince for most of the sides, on both sides, this side and this side. And then we've got Crown Prince alternating with Hurricane Butternut Squash down the centre. And we've got a couple of little gaps that we're going to put um, Trumbachinos in. So it's going to be a nice bed, it's going to be absolutely crammed full of squash and sweet corn. But that's what we want. So I've just harvested a quarter of the, these broad beans and uh, I've got to say I'm pretty pleased with them. Uh, so we've got half of that bed from there onwards still to harvest over the next two weeks and then the purple sprouting broccoli and the winter cauliflowers and the winter calabrese and the winter cabbages all go in there so there we go that's the harvest pretty nice and we've taken uh, two more of these tubs off there so far and hopefully we've got probably three more to go so that's a pretty good harvest this year so now i'm going to take six garlic up from this bed just to uh, see what they're like and um, we're probably going to harvest this whole bed tomorrow but uh, this test will determine exactly whether we are we will or we won't so when i did a previous test of this i wasn't um that thrilled with the size but you know literally in the last three weeks they've put on so much growth it just shows that uh, a bit of tlc really pays dividends so let's get harvesting so i'm going to start with this beauty and 
Oh yes, quite pleased with this. A few of them are starting to split, which is why I am kind of quite keen to get them harvested. But that is a good size. When they do split, it's not a big issue for us because uh, we either use the split ones obviously as the seed for next year or we um, pick all the individual cloves. So uh, yeah, it's no problem at all. Anyway, let's get harvesting some more. I think we'll go a bit further down the bed and we'll just see what we can find. Let's have a look at this one. I did kind of dig around a little bit last night just to see. And again, a little bit of splitting on that one. Well, let's just check to see whether we're all, all of them are starting to split. Oh. No, that one's beautiful. So that's all right. So let's get another two or three. Well, that one's falling over a bit, so let's have a look at that one. That one shouldn't be, shouldn't be so good. That one probably is splitting. So there we go. I pulled eight, and four are suitable for storing and the rest are suitable for pickling, so uh, that's pretty good. So I thought I'd show you my old friend. This uh, courgette has been in the polytunnel for a long time. I brought it outside about a month ago. It's getting a bit tired now. We've been taking a courgette off it every other day for a long time. So uh, anyway, as I said, it's coming to an end. Not to fear because our centre cut is doing great. We took centre cut off one of these two days ago, I think. And we've got another one here, and another one there, and another one there, and another one there, and another one here, and another one there. They are quite prolific. So I'm on to my runner beans now. Uh, you don't expect a massive crop from these early runner bean plants in pots, but uh, it's definitely worthwhile. I really love them. And I've got a few coming on here. You do have to hunt around for them a bit though. I like my runner beans really small and tender like this. So these sort of plants are kind of perfect really for that. Lovely and early. And yeah, I'll keep picking that. And it's basically the same story on the French beans. Lots of very small beans. But as I said, you know, I'm happy. And the thing is, you know, it's important to start picking them early like this to stimulate more production. So I'm going to keep going. So that's actually about twice I think what we got last week and so I hope it continues at that rate. A doubling every week would be very nice. And at the moment all we have are lots and lots of flowers on the dwarf French beans. So I've got to be patient there. And next I'm going to pick some of these overwintering onions. There's some reasonable size ones. I'm going to pick the biggest ones for now. None of these have gone to seed, which is really nice. So we're basically picking, I don't know, maybe a third of that bed today, I think. There we go. So if I get my sums right, we should be harvesting this amount every week now until August when the main crop are ready and of course overwintered onions are fruiting now fresh rather than storing. So next up are the onions. I'm taking spring onions out of the centres here. And that's the first batch looking quite nice. And I've got some smaller ones in the centre here which are better for salads so I'm going to pick and those. These are and I like to cut them off at the bottom with a knife makes it easier to harvest them and there's less disruption to the ground. Mm, so they cleaned up really nicely. Very pleased with those. 
And now I'm harvesting the radish. And the key to radish at this time of year, and we actually stopped growing it, this is our last batch, is to grow them quick and well watered. And if you do that, then even a radish like this is uh, it's not woody and it's not kind of fibrous and there isn't any holes in it or anything like that. So they might be big, but they're still really good quality. But as I said, it gets ever more difficult as we move into summer to uh, grow decent radish. So we stop it because there's so many great alternatives to radish that, uh, yeah, why bother with something that's a bit substandard at that, in that season? And now I've harvested the radish, you can see the New Zealand spinach, which is interplanted into that radish bed. And it's actually looking really nice. Needs a bit of weeding, but still not too bad. And those look quite nice now that they've been cleaned up. So I'm going to fill that bucket full of water. Pop the spring onions in there so that the roots are in the water. Keeps them both in fresh. I'm going to some smoothie mix now. And I really like this uh, really delicate uh, perennial kale for that. Um, it's not like the Taunton Dean. I can't remember what the name of this one is. I'll put it in an overlay. But uh, yeah, it's really, it's really lovely. And although the Taunton Dean are better for cooking, these little baby leaves are pretty good in smoothies too. And there's still masses of really good smoothie greens, just leaves like this on the uh, chard, which we should have taken out last week, but we didn't, which is quite nice then because we get another harvest off it. So uh, I'm not too unhappy about that. So now I'm going to pick one of these strange Romanesco cauliflowers, which uh, kind of gone a bit of purple instead of uh, lovely green, but uh, tastes lovely. And I'll also take some of the tender leaves onto the brassicas and I'm going to pick just probably only maybe one more pick of this uh, perennial kale, the Taunton Dean, because then I just want it to concentrate on building its strength up for next spring because it's really of most benefit in spring, this plant. I've got another one down there, so I'll pick that in a minute. So I've just picked these sprout leaves, really gorgeous, and uh, a big favourite of ours, and lots of people on the allotments now grow sprouts for leaves. And then I'm just going to clear this bed for carrots. I sowed carrots in that one this week, so be uh, carrots in this one next week. On to some first picks. So this is the perpetual spinach. It's looking really nice. So uh, this grows like crazy, so you need to keep on top of it. So I will probably be taking about 20%, maybe 30% off this bed today. So we left a lot on there. And we'll see how the plant manages. We've basically just taken the biggest leaves off there and uh, look to see if all those big leaves are back next week if so we'll do pick the same and gradually just pick harder and harder i don't expect this plant isn't this one isn't going to overwinter for us um, because it's the earliest bed and um, we'll probably find it will go to seed if we keep on having a lot of hot weather but uh, it's it's nice to have at least one early bed in the sort of spinach chard family. So now we're on to the New Zealand spinach bed and we can pick this reasonably hard as well, a bit like the uh, chard, so maybe 20% off this and uh, we'll see how it responds next week. So that's quite a nice first pick. And the 
bed looks almost as if it's not been touched, which is kind of the idea on the first pick. I'm going to pick some of these Monge 2 peas. And I'm going to pick these pretty hard now because the ones in the back garden are effectively ready. Well, they are ready. So uh, these won't, uh, aren't really needed now. So I'm going to get uh, get these picked, I think. So not a huge harvest, but then we have been picking these continuously for the last month. So uh, oh. these are just the drags, really. And I've left all load on because I want them to uh, give me seed for next year. So now I'm on to one of my other first picks. And this time it's the Golden Purse Lane. And I'm actually going to pick this quite hard because I want it to side shoot. So I'm picking it sort of down to that, taking all that off. So sort of down to here. Not on every one, this sort of amount. So if I did that right, that will have all grown back by next week. And that's a lovely harvest for the first pick. That's going to make a real difference in the salad mixes. So I'm almost done now, thankfully. It's getting pretty warm. So I'm just going to pick some celery from the polytunnel. So again, we try not to overpick this. Just a nice bunch every week. So there we go. That's about half of today's harvest. The rest is coming from the back garden. But I'm not going to show that today. This is enough, I think. So it is interesting at the moment, isn't it, to look at the different harvests that everybody's doing. Some people are just starting the harvest. Some people like us are kind of midway through our year. And uh, we've harvested, I think, about £4,200 worth of edge so far. And obviously we've got a lot to come. Um, and yeah, it's very different approaches. You know, obviously we're a, a winter and spring uh, gardener as well as a summer and autumn gardener. And it makes a big difference. Now is a very relaxing time for us, although Sundays is quite a busy time because it's harvest day and it's really hot and I want to get all the veggies home. So I'm going to finish this video now. Got a lot more harvesting to do uh, at home, but I'm not going to film that. But uh, anyway, that's for another day. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this quick video. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon.